Hey guys, happy Friday. Hope everybody's doing well and uh, getting ready for a pretty mild weekend this weekend. Um, while I was going through and trying to figure out what kind of a video I wanted to do today, uh, I was looking through all kinds of different places and ideas and and uh, decided to do a video on something called Chevaretto. Uh, but then I realized uh, that my buddy Jeremy over on Geeked already did this video fairly recently. So uh, we're gonna do it again anyway. Uh, his method is a little different. His hardware is a little different. Uh, so I am gonna go ahead and do this on Open Media Vault slash Docker and Portainer. Uh, I will link to his video down in the description as well. So if you want to have a look at a different way to do this on different hardware, uh, that will be a, uh, uh, an available resource for you as well. So uh, if we jump over to my desktop here, we can see that uh, Chevaretto is a self-hosted image or image hosting software. Um, kind of think of it like your own personal private imger uh, or imager, I don't know how to pronounce it. I've always called it imger. I've heard other people pronounce it imager. I anyway, think of it as your own private version of that. <clears throat> In fact, if we come over here to their demo, uh, if we go to their homepage uh, for the demo, uh, let's see what it does. It just wants me to go there. Uh, so by default, they've got it set up to go to the upload screen. Uh, but if we go to random, uh, we can see there's our random image that was shared. Uh, we can go to uh, recent and see all of the recent photos that were uploaded. Uh, they've got this in community mode with everything public. Uh, you can adjust that however you'd like in the settings in the back end. Um, so overall, like I said, it's very, very similar to Imgur. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at installing uh, Chevaretto here. So uh, what we're gonna do is go to Portainer first. Uh, we're going to uh, go over here to Stacks. We're gonna create a new stack. And then I've got uh, a blog post with some code down here. Uh, in fact, in the description down below, you'll find a link to this blog post. Um, it's it's not quite finished yet, but by the time it goes up this afternoon, it will be. Um, and it has all of the instructions that you'll need uh, in order to do this if you want to follow along uh, with the video, or if you don't want to watch me and listen to me, uh, you can uh, read this blog post and hopefully accomplish the same thing. So <clears throat> we've got our, uh, our, our portainer stack set up here. The next thing, of course, we need to do uh, is give the stack a name. And then we can kind of come down and take a look at uh, some of the things that we need to adjust. <clears throat> now, by default, uh, originally when I when I set this up, this Maria database, uh, I had it buried inside the application uh, folder structure. And for whatever reason, it just wouldn't work. Um, maybe you guys will have better luck with that, but I found just leaving this in a, a root directory like database, uh, it, I had the best results with that. Um, and then of course, below that, we've got the environment for uh, the passwords and the usernames, that sort of thing. Uh, of course, for security reasons, you'll wanna change these. Uh, but if you do change these, uh, you'll also wanna come down and change these to, be, uh, to line up with whatever you change up here. Uh, so if we scroll down a little bit further, of course, then we get into the actual Chevretto uh, application. We're depending on the database there. Um, restart should I actually already, or should be set to uh, unless stopped. I'll have to change that. Of course, I need to do uh, the same thing here. Oops. Like so. And then if we scroll down, uh, of course, we've got two different volumes here. Uh, the first one is uh, for images. Uh, this is where uh, you will, all of the images that get uploaded will be stored. Uh, so make sure that if you're going to uh, use this regularly, uh, you put it on a drive that's got a, a fairly significant amount of storage space available. Uh, the other thing that we'll need to do here uh, is actually, uh, we're gonna need to map a PHP INI file uh, to, uh, well, to user local, et cetera, PHP, like you see over here. Uh, we're gonna need to actually create that file. Uh, and I will show you how to do that in just one second. Um, but if we look, we're set to port 8686 here. Of course, you can change that just by changing the, the first uh, set of numbers there. And then uh, you can probably leave all of this. That should be just fine. So um, <clears throat> what we we'll wanna do first, I think, uh, is actually go over here um, and set up this php.ini file. So the first thing we're gonna do here is uh, log into our server. Oops, panda.local, oops. It always puts that in the wrong darn window. So let's bring that up here. So let's uh, let's do a CD. Uh, we're gonna do uh, SRV. We're gonna put this on my external drive. Uh, I'm gonna say dev disk by label files, SSD. 
Um, and then let's just take a look in here. Now, I've already created a, a configuration or a conf folder in here, and that's where we're gonna put that php.ini file. So we'll do a cd into conf, and then uh, here you can actually see that I did that, but what I'll do, I'll do rm uh, php.ini, you won't have to do that. Uh, I just wanted to remove that INI file, uh, so we can go ahead and create it uh, manually right now, just by typing in nano uh, space php.ini, and there we go. So then what we'll do, again, uh, what I'm gonna copy and paste in here will be available in the blog post. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the max uh, upload max file size to 20 megs, uh, the post max size to 20, uh, maybe I'll set that to, maybe I'll set that to 50. Uh, the memory limit, oops, memory limit is for how much RAM do you want to be available to your container. Uh, like I said in the blog post, if you've only got four gigs of RAM, don't try to give this four gigs, it won't work well. Um, so I've got four gigs on here, I'm gonna give it half of that. And then the maximum execution time is 180 seconds or three minutes. So then we can press Control O, Enter and Control X. And uh, now we've created that file, so let's go ahead and minimize PuTTY here. Um, so with all of this being said, uh, all we've got to do now is just scroll down and click on deploy the stack. So we'll give this a second to do its thing. This shouldn't take very long at all. Um, <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and just wait here. This should happen pretty quickly. There we go. Uh, so we'll come over here to Chevaretto um, and we'll go ahead and take a look at the logs. Um, temporary server started. That looks okay. Oops. It actually said something as soon as I did that. So now it's doing time zone stuff, that's fine. Uh, so let's see, that should be fine. Let's go ahead, jump over here. All right, so it is still creating uh, this stuff over here. Let's go back. Let's actually go ahead and just restart the database. I've noticed uh, recently, I've had to do this fairly regularly. Um, and then we'll pop this back open and take a look. There we go. All right, so uh, I was expecting this error message. It's uh, uh, basically, it's just uh, a permissions issue uh, inside the container uh, folder that we created. So what we're gonna do, because we don't actually have, um, do, 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 do. okay. So what we're looking for is this images folder, sort of. Uh, what, we're, what we're actually looking for is this right here. Uh, this is where we mapped it. Um, so what we're gonna do is navigate to this, directory right here, and we're going to change the permissions on that folder. Um, so what we'll do then is, of course, we'll come back over to here, um, and then we'll do an ls. Uh, so now we've got Chevaretto there, so we can do a cd into Chevaretto. And then right there is the, um, the Chevaretto images folder that we need to modify. So I'm gonna paste this. Uh, again, all of this will be in the blog post down below. Uh, then we're gonna say Chevro, oops. Chevretto images, just like so. Uh, all we've done is we've changed the permissions for that folder. Um, and then we can come over here, refresh. And now we can actually create our admin account. So, oops, we're gonna say uh, DB Tech, oops, and then me at uh, DB Tech Reviews.com. Give it a password. Um, and then, of course, I'm gonna give it this. Now, right here, you've got the option to set this to community or to personal. Now, if you're going to expose this to the internet, um, you'll wanna be careful about setting this to community uh, just because there's a lot of security stuff that needs to go into uh, making sure that you, you're not gonna get hacked, things won't be exploited, that sort of thing. So whatever you decide to do here, be careful. Um, just make sure that you're comfortable exposing your server to the internet, uh, whether you set this up for personal or community. Uh, so I'm gonna set it to community. We're gonna go ahead and install Chevaretto. All right, so now we can go ahead and log into the dashboard or continue to the dashboard rather. Okay, so then we'll go ahead and we'll say DB Tech, type in my password, like so. And here we are logged into the admin area here. Um, <clears throat> so there are lots and lots of options here in the back end. Uh, now, the one thing I will say, if we scroll down here, we can see that, that it did take the max upload size and max post size and max execution time. So we've got 20, 50, and 180, and the memory limit as well, just like we set up in that php.ini file. So we know that's working properly. That's good, we're, we're glad to see that. Uh, what we wanna do though, is actually come over here to settings, uh, go to website, and or click on website there, and then go to image upload, uh, because uh, it doesn't actually change it here. 
Uh, and this actually tells us we've got a maximum upload of 20 uh, based on uh, this PHP INI file. Uh, so you can set this, 10 is probably fine uh, to upload pictures to that sort of thing, uh, but you can take this up to 20. Uh, max upload size for guests, uh, we could probably make that five megs instead. Um, and that's really all you need to change in here uh, as far as making uh, making it easy to upload images. Uh, that's just one of those things that you really need to go in and make sure uh, that you take a look at before you try to deploy this and have people complaining that, you, that they can't upload uh, large images. So just something to keep in mind there. We'll go ahead and click on Save Changes. Um, but then there are other things that you can do uh, in here, uh, like for the website, uh, you can change the website name, the description, the website description, uh, the default time zone. Uh, you can you can say, do I want search enabled, explore enabled, guests enabled? Uh, do we want people to look at just random pictures? Now, some of this, like likes, follows, uh, a few other little things here and there uh, are not available on the free community version. You will have to upgrade to a paid version in order to get some of those features. That's just kind of one of the things that they've decided to do here. Um, so once you've made all of the changes you wanna make here, uh, of course you can go ahead and go down and click save changes. And again, there are lots and lots of different things in here. Uh, one thing you also might wanna do is go to homepage um, and change uh, the, this background image, your header image or your, your logo up here. Um, there are a few different places uh, that you'll want to go through and make sure uh, that you you change images, change names, things like that. Uh, I really do feel like some of that was glossed over when they created this, but um, but it is one of those things. You want to go through each of these and uh, make sure that they all fit your needs uh, as well as possible. Um, I don't want to go through each screen. Uh, most of them are pretty innocuous, little changes here and there. Uh, really the big things that I wanted to cover, I was making sure you could upload images um, using the PHP INI, and then also going into the image settings and making sure that those file sizes are, are big enough that people can actually upload images. So with that being said, you could, if you wanted to, uh, you know, attach this to traffic or Nginx proxy manager or whatever, uh, going through the standard steps of doing that. Uh, it's pretty easy to get set up, uh, more easy in my opinion with Nginx than it is with traffic, um, but, but definitely take your pick on how you'd like to do that. So overall, great little container, lots of fun to use, easy to set up, uh, a bit more in depth than we normally go with having to uh, change file or folder permissions, create the PHP INI file. We've never really had to do that in the past uh, with any of the videos that we've, uh, we've created or any of these other containers that we've made, whatever. Uh, we've never had to kind of go this in depth, um, except for with Nextcloud. That's a whole different ball game though. So uh, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, it would mean a lot to me if you gave the video a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, like I said, all of the information from this video will be available in the blog post linked down below. Uh, while you're down there, there are a couple of different links uh, where you can find uh, different ways to support the channel. Uh, one is through coffee, that's a one-time tip jar. Then there is also a uh, Patreon. There are four different levels presently uh, that you can subscribe to. Uh, one of those levels, the $3 a month level, will give you access or early access to any of the content that I create. Uh, I always try to get this uploaded a few hours before uh, it goes live for the general public. Uh, the five and $10 levels on Patreon will give you access uh, to a, a patrons only Discord server where we can hang out, chat about things, uh, go more in depth on certain things, that sort of stuff. So if you're interested in supporting the channel in either of those ways, uh, those are options as well. So I think with all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.